Hello friends, I'm George, the nice manic gentleman. Welcome back to the channel guys, I hope that all of you are doing well. I'm continuing the Latafa review week that I'm currently going through with two more Latafa fragrances that I'm going to review in this video today. Earlier this week I reviewed the Latafa Badia Aoud Honor and Glory and the Latafa Kaet Intense and today I'm going to take a look at two more scents from the House of Latafa. On one hand I have the Mahir Black Edition which is a very interesting, very unique, very dark and masculine scent that can be quite challenging for some people but I absolutely love. And on the other hand I have the Latafa Nasheed which is an interesting take on Nishani Anis DNA. So let's take a look at these two today. First I'm going to take a look at the Latafa Nasheed. The fragrance comes packaged in this sort of an, uh, like a camouflage uh, painted uh, box. On the front you get the, the name of the fragrance Nasheed, the logo of uh, the Latafa. Uh, the concentration which is EDP, the bottle size 100 milliliters. On the top and on the back you get some additional branding. There's a sticker of authenticity and on the bottom there's a production date which in my case is May of 2022. So it's a bottle that's almost two years old more than two years old actually and once you take out the bottle this is how the bottle looks now it's an interesting design uh, the cap is uh, has a metallic coating and looks very similar to something like uh, you get with uh, an amouage fragrance for an example it's a very very heavy uh, bottle itself uh, the cap is not really that snug of a fit and i wouldn't recommend you picking the bottle through the cap the note breakdown of Latafa Nasheed is at least perfograntica has the following notes. The top notes are Gaia Kut, just one note listed. The middle notes, again, just one note listed. It's Nutmeg. And the base notes are Frankenstein, Kashmiran and Sandalwood. Now, there are a few very important notes that are missing out of this uh, note breakdown that Nasheed definitely has. I'll show you the spray of Nasheed in action and then I'll tell you about the scent of this fragrance and I'll tell you what are those important notes that are missing out of that, that note breakdown that, just I, that I just read to you. One thing that I don't like about this fragrance, at least on my particular bottle, is as you can see the sprayer is quite weak. And that's unfortunate. And I want you the scent of uh, Nasheed from the House of Latafa. As I said, this fragrance is uh, somewhat of an inspired by uh, Nishane Ani. And that fragrance, that original fragrance, is one of my most favorite, uh, if not my most favorite, vanilla based fragrance. It's a very, very sweet scent, and the sheet also is pretty, pretty sweet. And that's the first and most important note that's missing out of that note breakdown, and that's the vanilla note. Immediately after you spray in a sheet, uh, you'll get hit in the face by a ton of the vanilla note. It's not as strong as you get with the original fragrance, but this is basically the backbone of the whole fragrance. Other than the, that sweet vanilla note that you're getting uh, out of this fragrance in the opening, uh, there's quite a lot of spiciness as well. The nutmeg is definitely here. There's a black pepper note or something peppery that's missing from the note breakdown that's definitely in here. This feels quite peppery and also quite woodsy, uh, you know, immediately after you spray it. And that's down to that guy could note. Also, another thing that this one has is a pretty strong uh, incense note, quite a smoky viper. From this fragrance you will get immediately after you spray. When this goes into the dry down it becomes a little bit more sweet, the vanilla note starts to become a little bit more powerful on the dry down. There's a hint of uh, that Kashmiran uh, note, uh, it becomes a little bit more woodsy, the sandalwood is there giving it a bit of a creaminess, the Gaia Kut is still there on the dry down, it still remains also quite uh, you know quite smoky on the dry down. The spiciness, that pepperness from the opening is completely gone by the time you hit the dry down of this fragrance. All in all it's an interesting take on the Nishane Ani DNA which lacks a bit of the sweetness of the original fragrance. And that leads me to the next point in this uh, video and about this fragrance and that's how similar this is to Nishane Ani that this, mo this most often gets compared to. And I would say that it's pretty similar although not identical, by far not identical. What this lacks in the opening it lacks the citrusy punch that you get out of Nishane Ani. Nishane Ani has a very nice citrusy, fresh citrusy opening. Nasheed does not have that, it feels spicier than Ani in the opening, feels less sweet in the opening, feels more spicy and feels uh, more smoky in the opening than Ani. Oh you know, it's an interesting sort of a distant inspiration if I can call it that. When it comes to performance, this is one area where Nasheed actually turned out to be a bit of a disappointment for me. Ani is a very strong fragrance and the other inspired by fragrances that I have uh, that are 
closely uh, resembling Ani. All of them have a very good performance, but unfortunately Nashi turned out to be a disappointing performer. I've been getting about 6 hours of performance out of this fragrance, which in my books is slightly above average, but where this lacks seriously is the projection. It's really more of an intimate type of scent. When it comes to the, the price of this fragrance, I paid about 20 euros to get it, which in my opinion is a decent deal. And when it comes to versatility, this is a perfectly unisex fragrance that can be worn pretty much all year round, maybe apart from the hottest months of the year. Again, perfectly unisex, uh, more of a nighttime scent in my opinion. And now onto the second fragrance featured in today's video, Latafa Mahir Black Edition. The fragrance comes packaged in this very nice looking uh, black colored box with uh, some silver accents. On the front you got a sticker of authenticity, you got the name of the fragrance, the name of the company. Uh, on the side you get the concentration which is EDP, the bottle size 100 milliliters. You get some additional information on the back. And uh, somewhere around here there should be a production date. And yes, the production date is stamped on with black ink on the black uh, cardboard box which makes no sense at all in my opinion. But the production date of this particular bottle is August of 2023. In order to get uh, to the bottle you have to slide this part of the box out, it's sort of a sleeve. And then inside here is where the actual fragrance lies. And once you take it out, this is how the bottle looks. It has exactly the same design as any other member of the uh, Mahir line of fragrances. As you can see here, I have Mahir uh, Legacy and they look completely the same. Black colored, colored bottle, again silver accents, very very heavy bottle and this bottle is an absolute weapon. The note breakdown of Mahir Legacy has the following notes. The top notes are black pepper, pink pepper and saffron. The middle notes are labdanum, kate oil, gurgeon balsam and rabab. And the base notes are leather, cedar, patchouli, gaiaco, gaiac, oud, musk and moss. I'll show you the spray in action of uh, Mahir Black Edition and then I'll tell you about the scent of uh, this particular fragrance. The sprayer here is a lot better compared to what you get with Nasheed. Now, the opening of this fragrance is very, very challenging. There's uh, something very fresh and citrusy, very bright in the opening that sits somewhere in the background. You get a citrusy note that's not listed on the breakdown, note breakdown, that adds just enough freshness just to make this uh, somewhat wearable in the opening. The opening is very dark, very spicy. The peppery notes are there, the saffron is there, the gaikut is there right after you spray this fragrance, a hint of leather as well. Uh, you know, and uh, sort of a greenness uh, somewhere in the background. And it's a very, very smoky. The opening is very, very smoky. And that's what makes this fragrance pretty challenging, in my opinion, in the opening. When this goes into the dry down, it becomes a lot more wearable compared to the opening. You lose the freshness of the citruses in the opening and also that very strong, very heavy smoky note or vibe that uh, I get out of this fragrance on the dry down becomes a lot more subtle, a, a lot more civilized and a lot easier to wear. The dry down becomes very woodsy. You know, the cedar wood and the Gaia wood are there and they are sort of the backbone of this fragrance. Uh, but you're introduced to quite a lot of ambery sweetness on the dry down as well, which uh, makes this uh, a lot more wearable again compared to the opening. And the leather note is pretty, pretty strong on the dry down compared to the opening. Also feels quite musky and all around it's a very interesting, very dark, very sophisticated and mature scent profile that especially in the opening will be challenging for a lot of people out there. When it comes to performance, a very, very strong performer, but that's to be expected out of that very dark, very smoky, very wood, wood, woodsy heavy scent profile. I've been getting uh, quite uh, a long lasting uh, sort of a uh, performance out of this fragrance uh, around about the 9 to 10 hour mark, which in my opinion is a very, very strong performing scent. And also this tends to project really, really nicely for two, even up to two and a half hours. So performance wise, this is a strong, strong fragrance. When it comes to the, the, the price that I paid for this fragrance, I paid slightly over 20 euros, which in my opinion actually is a very, very good deal as long as you're enjoying the scent because you get a very lavish presentation, very unique scent profile and fantastic performance. And when it comes to versatility, this is supposedly a unisex scent, but in my opinion, this is leans very heavily to the masculine territory. Definitely a cold weather scent and definitely more of a nighttime scent. And also this has an age factor, definitely more of a mature type of scent. 
And so at the end, a few final words about Nasheed and Mahir Black Edition, both from the House of Latafa. When it comes to Nasheed, this actually turned out to be a bit of a disappointment for me. I was expecting this to be closer to Ani, but it lacks a bit of the citruses in the opening. It feels a little bit, not a little bit, but quite a bit more spicy, more smoky than Ani. And also it lacks performance, at least in my experience, uh, my bottle. I've given it enough time to macerate, but unfortunately it's a... a sort of an uh, about average performer and definitely lacks when it comes to projection. It's uh, a cheap fragrance at the same time, it's easy to wear because it's a you know vanilla, vanilla based fragrance that's perfectly unisex but again I just uh, have to be uh, fully honest with you and I've been quite disappointed by Nasheed especially when it comes to performance but also I expected it to be closer to Ani. Still though a decently good uh, vanilla based fragrance. And then on the other hand Mahir Black Edition this is a fantastic uh, dark sophisticated mature scent. This one though will be uh, sort of a very challenging for a lot of people out there. Even I find uh, the, the opening quite challenging. So test this one before you buy. Definitely test this one before you buy. But if that smoky, leathery, slightly green, very spicy uh, and uh, ambery sweet uh, scent profile sounds interesting to you. Something very strong with very good performance. Great for the cold weather. If that sounds interesting to you then definitely check out uh, a black Mahir Black Edition, but again remember to test this one out to sample it first before you actually buy a full bottle blindly. At the end of the day, Nashit has been a disappointment, and I absolutely love Mahir Black Edition. In today's video, I reviewed two more Latafa fragrances for you guys. On one hand, Nashit, which is something that's inspired by Nishane Ani and for me turned out to be a disappointment and on the other hand Mahir Black Edition which is a very very interesting unique dark uh, and challenging scent that I absolutely love. I hope that you found this video interesting if you did give it a like and I also hope that you're going to join me in the next one and until then stay safe and bye bye.